Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler episode. And today I thought I'd take a look at what's probably the only Windows 3.1 game I really play anymore. And that game is Castle of the Winds. Now this is actually one of the first dungeon crawls I ever played. And I still play it today because it's really fun, despite the fact it looks incredibly outdated. It was released in 1992 by Rick Sada through Epic Mega Games. And it's actually a surprisingly simple dungeon crawl compared to other dungeon crawls of the time, which were really complex, unforgiving, and difficult to play if you didn't know what you were doing. Like, I mean, for one thing, this game actually has a story to it, which is depicted through paragraphs that come up on screen at certain points in the game. A lot of dungeon crawls up to this point were just simply get as deep as you can and get as much gold as you can. Whereas here, you're actually trying to accomplish something. Basically, the story comes down to your character being sort of like the heir to the throne for a particular kingdom, but you don't really know it. You've sort of been living the farmer's life and then your village gets toasted and that's how you come to figure all this stuff out. Yeah, the village you start in at the beginning of the game kind of gets burned to ashes just a few minutes in. Well, okay, a few minutes depending on like how fast you go through the game. This is actually, a, because of how easy it is, really easy to just speed run through this thing. I've literally beaten this game in under five hours before. That's how fast you can get through it once you know what you're doing. And if you're playing on lower skill settings, because on the higher skill settings, you got to be really careful because it gets almost as difficult as those old dungeon crawls. Though it is still pretty easy overall, just simply because of the fact that the game gives you a lot of items to find, a lot of enchanted items, you get a lot of money through the process, and it's not a hardcore game or strict play or anything like that. When you die, you can just hit the reload button and go back to where you last saved if you happen to save any time near where you died. As far as playing the game is concerned, you have four stats that you have to worry about. Strength, Intelligence, Constitution, and Dexterity. Now, because you're playing specifically as a warrior slash magic user, you have to kind of balance your stats regarding which one you really want to emphasize. Like, I mean, Strength affects how much damage you do. Constitution affects how many hit points you have, Intelligence affects how much mana you have, and Dexterity affects how much damage you take, as well as how often you're able to hit things. Now, that's the big thing right there, is that if you're not hitting your enemies, then your strength is pointless. So, what I like to do is balance my Constitution and Dexterity out, and then either focus on Strength, to give myself a more melee kind of character, or focus on intelligence to give myself a magic using character. But either way, you're going to be doing both. So it's important to keep both stats at a pretty good level. Like, I mean, you don't want to keep one really minimum or else you're really going to run into problems. Playing the game is really simple, especially for a dungeon crawl. All you do is you move around with the numeric keypad, you attack enemies simply by running into them, and then you actually use the mouse for a lot of interactions. For example, you hold the right mouse button down if you want to look at something, you use the mouse to click and drag items to and from your inventory while you're at the stores, or even just onto the ground. And plus you also use the mouse to just click on magic spells to use and cast them in the exact spots you want them to hit. Now, speaking of the magic system, that's one thing that I kind of like and I kind of don't. Like, I mean, at the top of the screen, you can see a magic bar that has 10 icons on it. And obviously, you have more than 10 spells in this game, so you have a magic menu you can pull up where you can cast your spells from. The spell bar, I like. Having 10 spells readily available at the click of a button. The spell menu, I don't like, because you have to click to it, and then you have to select your spell category, and then you have to select the spell itself, and sometimes these are spells you would cast more than once in a row. So having to go through all that, they could have had like some kind of shortcut maybe or something that might have helped that, but alas, if you really want to shortcut your spells, you're limited to the 10 buttons at the top. Other than that, though, there are other shortcut keys that you can take advantage of, like being able to open your inventory and everything, and plus holding the shift key down actually lets you run down corridors really fast. So you can quickly get from point A to point B, and then it interrupts you if something like a monster appears. So you don't have to worry about accidentally tapping past it and getting, getting hit a couple times as a result of that. Now I am playing it on easy skill right now, but I have actually beaten it on experts only difficulty, which is the highest setting there is. The reason I'm playing on easy right now is just so I can get a lot of footage for it and everything. On the higher skill settings, you really have to be careful because you don't get as much experience. Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. You get the same number of experience, it just takes more experience to gain levels. 
and you also don't find enchanted items as often, plus you get cursed items more often. Yeah, you know, it has that whole thing going on where you have items that can be cursed and have negative effects when you try to equip them, and then you can't unequip them unless you remove the curse first. But then you also have items that can be enchanted, and when they're enchanted, you get all kinds of extra effects. Though, this really only applies to weapons. Like, I mean, all kinds of items in this game can have enchantments. Like, even your backpack can have enchantments. But the thing is that it's the weapons that get all the interesting ones, like being able to boost attributes or being able to detect monsters and stuff like that. All the other ones, they're just really simple enchantments, like raising your ability to hit things or raising your armor value. Now the game's actually split into two parts. The first part was the shareware version that people would download for free and then they would play it and if they liked it, they would register the game and get the second part. But the game's actually been freeware for well over five or six years now. Um, I don't actually know the exact point in time when the author made it freeware, but it happened sometime around 2005, give or take a year or two. In any case, if you want to download the full version, I would point you towards the author's website, except it doesn't exist anymore. So instead, I'm just going to recommend the old standby, the RGB Classics website at www.classicdosgames.com. And if you do decide to download, keep in mind that it's been split into two parts, but once you're done with the first part and save your character through it, you can actually load your character up into the second part. So you know, transfer your character over from one part to the next, but you can start the second part without having a character from the first part. It's just that you won't have all your equipment and you'll gain a fixed number of levels. You're better off just going from the first to the second game. But as for why I still play this game anymore, I think it really comes down to the fact that it's a really approachable dungeon crawl. I mean, when you consider that this game came out in 1992, when dungeon crawls were really complex affairs with lots of keyboard combinations and things to press and no forgiveness, like strict play where if you die, you're gone for good. Things like that. It really made the dungeon crawl a sort of elitist kind of genre of games. Yet here was one that wasn't like that. It was one that you could get into, you could play it, and if you died, it wasn't going to completely erase your data. You could just reload and try again. So, you know, some people aren't going to like it because it's not that hardcore or anything like that, but, you know... I still like it. It's a fun thing to play, and that's what matters. It's fun. So, you know, if if you don't really like dungeon crawls that much, then this one's still worth a try, just to see if maybe it's that reason why you don't like them that much. Or even if you do like dungeon crawls and you haven't tried this one, you should definitely check it out. Anyways, that's all for this filler, so stay tuned for the next one. Should be a couple Saturdays from now. Not quite sure what I'm going to do for it yet, but you know me, I'll think of something. Anyways, see you guys then.